Welcome to section 4.7, antiderivatives. Now what are antiderivatives? Are they these? Are these the antiderivatives? No, no. Okay, let's see what does it really mean. Definition. A function f, okay, a function f is an antiderivative. Notice that this is capital F. It's an antiderivative of little f on an interval i if, once I take a derivative, what do I get? Little f. So basically what you're given is finding out what was the original function that we took its derivative and we got f. So that's the process of recovering a function little f, capital F of x from its derivative little f, and that's what you call anti-differentiation. And we use capital F, such as F, to represent its antiderivative of little f. G, capital G, is the antiderivative of little g, and so on and so forth. So find, example one, find an antiderivative for each of the following functions. So basically what you're going to do is ask yourself, what was the derivative, or rather, what is the function, so that if it's, I take its derivative, I'll get 2x. And you are very, very familiar now that we know that big F of X is equal to X squared. Well, what else? Let's see. Um, another possibility is F of X is equal to X squared plus 1, right? Or F of X is equal to X squared minus 3. So in general, we have it's a family, we call that a family of curves. You're going to get um, x squared plus an arbitrary, arbitrary constant c. Okay, because if you think about it, all these, uh, all these are quadratic functions whose vertex is at um, when x is equal to 0, and you have, that's x squared and you're going to get x squared plus 1, x squared minus 3, say somewhere here. So in general, what you've got is x squared plus a constant c. Okay, c could be minus 3, and then here it's 0, 1, etc. Okay, so let's try. What is g, capital G of x? Now think of the derivative of that trig function so that its derivative is cosine x. And what is it? It's going to be sine of x. And let's check. What's the derivative of sine of x? Cosine x. So we're going to take g of x to be any uh, family of curves of sine of x that just are translated vertically by a constant c. And if we combine f and g, that's really what h of x is. So this is going to be capital H of x. It's going to be x squared plus sine of x and that arbitrary constant. Because remember, when you take a derivative, what's the derivative of constant? Zero. So when you take the derivative, you get 2x, 2x plus its derivative of sine. It's cosine and plus zero. So you get back again you get the h of x, little h of x. Okay, theorem 6. If capital F of x is an antiderivative of little f on an interval i, then the most general antiderivative of f on i is, like I said, big F of x plus the arbitrary constant c. So if you've got, say, f of x is equal to, say, 2x, like what we did a while ago, the previous slide, f of x would be x squared plus c. So if we have g of x is equal to 3x squared, we know that big G of x is x cubed plus c, because take its derivative, it's going to be 3x squared. And any uh, 
vertical translation of an x cube. All right. So here in example two, you have a family of curves of x cubed because what is the antiderivative of big F? It's going to be x cubed plus all these constants. So um, you have x cubed minus 2, x cubed minus 1. That's y is equal to x cubed, y is equal to x cubed plus 1, y is equal to x cubed plus because remember these are all the y-intercepts. Okay, now it says here we're going to find the specific antiderivative of f, little f of x that satisfies this condition. What does this tell us? That if I plug in x equal to 1 into big F, I get negative 1, which means the specific, the particular y function or big F of x is the one that passes through the point 1, negative 1. So it turns out it's going to be the function y is equal to x cubed minus 2. How did they arrive at this answer? So what we'll do now is just take the antiderivative of f of x, and we know that it's going to be x cubed okay, plus a constant. So once we substitute f of 1, that's going to be 1 cubed plus c, it says it's going to be equal to negative 1. So basically what you're going to do is solve for c in this simple equation. So 1 plus c is equal to negative 1. c is equal to negative 2 once you add negative 1 to both sides. So our particular function that satisfies this condition is that big F of x equal to x cubed minus 2. Sure enough, to check Okay, this is just for checking purposes. All right, if we check f of 1 would be 1 cubed minus 2, which is equal to negative 1. So it satisfies the specific condition. So this is the graph of the function which passes through the point 1, negative 1. Okay, Theor table 4.2 is a very, very important table because it's the antiderivative formulas and k is any non-zero constant. So basically it's the coefficient of um, x in the argument of the trigonometric functions that we have here. Now concentrate on the antiderivatives because the antiderivatives, once you take its derivative, that's what you get. Okay, so let's see, how do we apply this um, function, how, does the, how do we read this table? Well, if this is the, the given little f function, this is the antiderivative. Here's your little f, that's your big F. So it turns out that if I have x to the n, the antiderivative is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, and then plus that arbitrary constant here, make sure that n is not equal to negative 1. Okay, so now what is the antiderivative of sine of kx? The antiderivative of sine of kx is 1 over k cosine of kx plus a constant. So if you notice that this 1 over k here is just to compensate once we take the derivative and you apply chain rule whenever there's a multiple of x on the trig expression because you know that's the argument of cosine. This is the argument of sine, etc. Our argument of tangent. And every time to check yourself, just take its derivative, you should get back the little f function here on the left. Okay, same thing. What's the what is the antiderivative cosine of kx? It's 1 over k sine of kx plus a constant. And again, check what's the derivative of sine is cosine multiplied by the uh, by chain rule. The derivative of kx is just k, and so that's why you have to divide by 1 over k, so you get back the little f right there. Okay, now what do you think is the antiderivative secant squared? Well, think of that function whose derivative is secant squared, and that's going to be tangent. 
So it's tangent kx divided by k, or 1 over k tangent of kx plus the constant. Again here, cosecant squared kx. Think about that. That's a derivative of what? Well, first of all, the derivative of cotangent is negative. So to compensate for the negative, you have to put the negative here. So that if I take this derivative, this is now, remember, that's the antiderivative, then I should get this back. And remember, this is the derivative of a function. So what is that particular function? It's going to be secant of kx. And again, compensate with a 1 over k. What's the derivative of cosecant? It's the negative. So if this is all you have, you've got to compensate with the negative there. So it's going to be, what's the derivative of cosecant? It's going to be negative cosecant kx cotangent kx. So, and then you multiply, and you multiply by, um, you multiply by k because of chain rule when you, multi when you uh, take the derivative of the argument of the trig function. Okay, so let's see if we can try this. Uh, finding general antiderivatives of each of the following functions. So for letter A, big F of x would be, using number 1, they're sure, little g, and so the big G would have just one power greater than the little, the power of x on the little F of x. So it's going to be x to the 6 over 6 right there, okay, plus a constant. Always check what is the derivative. Remember the derivative is 6, x to the 6, x to the 5th over 6, and so you go back to little f. Right, so let's try this one. Here, you got to write this as x to the 1 half. So big G of x is going to be, all right, so you, so that's a minus, right? So when you add 1 to it, you're going to get x to the 1 half divided by 1 half plus a constant. So when you simplify, remember when you divide, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's going to be 2 square root of x plus a constant. Once again, check what is the derivative of this. You should be able to get little g of x. All right, so let's try letter C capital H of X. So where does it match? It matches this one. And so what is its antiderivative? It's going to be cosine, but you have to put a negative in the front and a 1 over k. So what is k? It's going to be um, 2. So it's going to be negative 1 half cosine of 2x. Again, it's easy to just check whether you've got the right antiderivative by taking its derivative. And what's the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine, and then times 2. So negative sine times 2 plus negative 1 half, then that cancels out each other. You're just going to get sine of 2x, and that derivative is just 0. Okay, what does this really mean? What is i of x equal to the cosine of 1 half x? I'm writing it this way, that way you can identify that the k is equal to 1 half. So what is big i of x? It's going to be 2 because it's 1 over k. Okay, so 1 over 1 half is 2 sine of one half x plus a constant. Again, always check by taking its derivative, you should get this back. Take its derivative, that's what you get. Take its derivative, that is what you need, you should get, etc. Now, table 4.3 just tells you that if I have a constant multiple of little f, then its antiderivative is just a constant multiple times big F plus a constant, arbitrary constant C. And if you're the negative of a function little f, its antiderivative just follows the same sign. Basically, that's what that is. Plus, 
uh, arbitrary constant c. Now, if, if you have a sum or difference of two functions, then its antiderivative is also a sum of difference of two functions plus a constant. So here, what is the, the general antiderivative of little f? So first of all, let's rewrite this as 3 times x to the negative 1 half plus sine of 2x. And so capital F of x is going to be, all right, so that's 3 times, remember we've already done this, it's going to be x to the 1 half because you add 1 into negative 1 half and then make sure you compensate by dividing by 1 half plus, okay, now what is the antiderivative of sine of 2x? Okay, let's, let's erase that. I'll just use this. So it's going to be negative 1 over k, so 1 half cosine of 2x plus a constant. So let's rewrite everything. So once you, 3 divided by 1 half is the same as 6, x to the 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x plus c. Once again, all you have to do to make sure that this is the correct antiderivative is just differentiate, and you can see that once you differentiate that, you get this back. Differentiate this, you get this back, and the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, more definition. First definition well, we talked about is the uh, what is an antiderivative. Now, here, if we collect all antiderivatives of little f, that is what we call the indefinite integral of little f with respect to x. This is very important, with respect to x, and it's denoted by this long wiggly symbol. So we say that's the integral of f of x dx. The symbol, this symbol, is an integral sign, and the function f is the integrand whatever you want to integrate, basically, of the integral, and x is the variable of integration. So basically what this is just saying, okay, what is the antiderivative of this expression that's inside the integrand, which is the integrand, with respect to the variable x? So to, to, to evaluate, all you just do is really find the antiderivative of the integrand. It's going to be x cubed okay, over 3 minus 2, that's x to the 1, so x squared over 2 plus 5. Now, if you think about this, 5 has a coefficient, and it's actually x to the 0, okay? So add 1 to it, it's going to be just 5x to the 1, right? 1 over 1, and I'm not going to write that down plus constant c. So it's going to be x cubed over 3 minus x squared plus 5x plus c. All right, so let's check. What is the derivative of this expression? Then let's see. It's going to be 3x squared over 3, and so that's why you get x squared. What's the derivative of x squared, 2x. What's the derivative of 5x? That's Remember, that's the slope of your line. It's just 5. Derivative of c is 0. Well, see, you get back the integrand. All right. Find this. These are just um, exercises so that you be able to... Um, I got this all from a sample uh, exercises from your homework. Okay, so find an antiderivative of each of these functions. The antiderivative of 5x to the 4th is, and it says here, do as many as you can mentally. Now what do you think? What do you think is the original function so that if you take its derivative, you get this? Well, that's a hint. That's another hint. So it's going to be x to the 5th plus a constant. Check what is the derivative of x to the 5th, 5x to the 4th plus 0, so you get that. Okay, what is the antiderivative of x to the 11th? So again, 
it's going to be x to the 12 over 12 plus c. Take its derivative, what do you get? 12x to the 11th divided by 12, that cancels out the 12, you get x to the 11 only. All right. And then the last one, letter C, what's the antiderivative of the following? Then you have x cubed over 3, okay, minus 6x squared over 2, minus 7x plus a constant. So let's keep on rewriting. It's going to be x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared minus 7x plus c. And there's many more in the next video.